Hello again, everyone. Continuing New York Weeks, I'm going to finish them off with a look at the MLB, the Mets today, and the Yankees tomorrow. Looking at the Mets, they got a 64-56 and record and are currently leading their division. And in my opinion, of the two New York baseball teams, they're the better one. Um, I know the Yankees play in a more difficult division, the AL East, you know, the toughest division in all of baseball. But I think the Mets are, are better than the Yankees, and I think that hasn't been able to be said for a long time. And part of me is saying that because I'm a Jays fan, so naturally I dislike the Yankees. But I think it's also true. I think the Mets have a better pitching staff and are going to be great come playoff times. And I think New York fans have something to be excited about. Because um, as much as L.A., you could see Dodgers with the Angels in the World Series. You could also see Yankees versus the Mets. It's a definite possibility. So looking at the Mets, like I said, 64-56 and 56 after their tough loss last night to Baltimore, 5-4. But they're definitely still a great team and, um, in my opinion, are going to win this division. I think Washington, as great as their pitching staff is, um, aren't going to be able to seal the deal come the end of the season. And I think the Mets are going to win this division uh, by a slim margin, but I do think they'll win their division. Looking at their pitching staff, because it is fantastic, starting with DeGrom, 12-6 and six with a 1.98 ERA, and he is a strikeout per inning pitcher. Great, great pitcher there. The other strikeout per inning pitcher they have, so sad when the Jays traded this kid because I knew he was going to become something special, Noah Syndergaard. He's only 22. He's got a 7-6 and six record, 3.17 ERA, and is also a strikeout per inning pitcher. They got, they got a great young pitcher in him, um, and he will be a big stud in that starting rotation for years to come. Matt Harvey, obviously coming back off the injuries, having a solid season, 11-7, 2.57 ERA. Uh, nice, his record is a 7-9, but he does have a 3.50 ERA, so his record doesn't really highlight uh, his, his solid ERA. It is under 4. Uh, Bartolo Colon, obviously he's been exciting to see how many hits he's going to get this season. Beginning of the year, you know, after the first, you know, month, month and a half, he, you know, I was thinking he was saw young potential kind of a season. But that's not going to happen uh, for him now. He's 10-11 with a 4.58 ERA. So obviously a Cy Young season isn't going to happen for him. But still a very, very solid veteran pitcher. And I think all five of these starters are going to be 10-plus win uh, starters by, by the end of the season. I think I think DeGrom, Harvey, and Cologne could each even reach 15 wins. Maybe, maybe DeGrom even gets to 20. You know, let's be optimistic and, and talk crazy here. I think he's got that, that ability. Um, and then they also got a great closer in Familia. Who is also only 25 years old, so he could be in the closer for this team for you know years to come. Uh, he's 1.85 ERA. Anytime you get a closer, to have an ERA under two, that's fantastic. He's also a strikeout per inning guy. He's already got 33 saves on pace to probably get 40 plus by the end of the year. Great, great starting rotation. Solid guy to finish your games in the close situations. Great, great pitching staff on this team. Looking out at the outfield. Bringing in Jonas Cespedes proves that the Mets are here to win now. Kind of like Toronto did with all of their big trades. The Mets proved we're bringing in Cespedes. We want to win now. And they now have three guys in their lineup with Cespedes, Curtis Granderson, as well as Lucas Duda, who are going to be 20-plus home run guys this year because they already have hit over 20 home runs. Um, so maybe some of them will be 25, 30 home run guys. Cespedes will have a great year, 290 average. Anytime you can get a guy that's going to hit you 20 plus home runs and a potential 100 RBI guy who can also have an average over 275, that's great. Um, most guys who have that kind of power, you're going to give up some a bit of an average if they're you know if they bat 260 but are going to have 25 home runs, you're going to be fine with that. Um, but he's got a 290 average with 20 home runs, 69 RBIs, as well as five stolen bases, so he does have a little bit of a speed element to his game as well. Great, great pickup for this team. Curtis Granderson, the other star in the outfield for them. He's got a 252 average. So again, like I said, you're going to give up a little bit of average for a guy who's going to have 22 homers, 52 RBIs, as well as nine stolen bases for you. So he brings a speed element and a power element to his game. Great, great combination there in the outfield. Uh, other outfield outfielders I will look at. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the young guys first. You got Michael Conforto and Daryl Cicilani, who are 22 and 25 years old, respectively. Uh, Conferno's got a 231 average with a couple homers and 10 RBIs. And then Cicilline's got a 206 average with a homer, three RBIs, and five stolen bases. So um, he obviously has a little bit more of a speed element to his game than Conforto does. But two young guys that, um, you know, when Ren Granderson or Cespedes, if he doesn't stay after next year, I think these guys could potentially step in and be MLB players. Um, obviously a 206 average for Cicilline is not going to cut it. If he wants to be a regular everyday player in the MLB, he's going to have to get that up at least 50 points. 
And same with Conferto, 231. If he can get that up, but get 25, 30 points, um, then these guys could be solid, solid MLB players. Uh, Kirk, new and ice. I don't know how many games he's been in. Probably not a lot because he's only got a 188 average with three homers and 13 RBIs. Maybe a solid guy to have coming off the bench to pitch it for a pitcher in the seventh or eighth inning kind of thing. Uh, Juan Lagares and Michael Kadire, the other two guys, are having solid seasons. Lagares got a 260 average, four homers, 33 RBIs, seven stolen bases. And Kadair's got a 247 average with eight homers and 31 RBIs. So very, very solid outfield with Cespedes and Granderson. And then whoever the third guy is, as long as he can come in with you know, a 250-plus average, I, I think that's a solid, solid outfield they have there. Looking at the catcher position, again, another former J in Travis Darno. Uh, now that we have Russell Martin, I'm fine with this kid not being on the roster anymore. And really, unfortunately for Mets fans, they really haven't been able to see what, what he can do because he's been injured a lot of the time that he's been been with the Mets. He's only played in 32 games this year. In those 32 games, he's got a 263 average with six homers and 19 RBIs. So he does have some pop to his bat. He does have a, you know, a plus 260 average. Um, but you know, those, those stats are a little in, inflated and a little skewed in my opinion, since he's only played in 32 games, you know, what are his stats going to be if he plays in a hundred plus games, we'll have to see if that can happen next year and he can stay healthy. The other young catcher they have on the, on their team, uh, Kevin Plawecki, who's played in 59 games. Uh, he's also, he's only 24 years old. He's got a 228 average with a couple homers and 17 RBIs. So those kind of stats aren't going to keep you in a lineup, especially in the NL when you know your ninth batter is a pitcher. Your catcher has to be able to produce um, in the offensive game as well. That doesn't mean he's got to have a 285 average and get 20 homers and that kind of stuff. You don't you don't need Buster Posey like numbers to be a catcher in the NL, but you need to have better stats than a 228 average. That just it's not going to cut it. It's not going to keep you in the, in the MLB for a long time. And if Darno wasn't hurt then he'd probably be playing his whole season down in AAA. So we'll, we'll see what happens with him. Hopefully Tarno can stay healthy, and we'll see some consistent catcher play from the Mets next year. Uh, first baseman Lucas Duda having a great year. 246 average, 21 homers, 55 RBIs. Again, like I said, you're going to give up a little average for a guy that's going to hit you 20-plus homers, potentially 30 homers by the end of the year. Great first baseman for this team. Look at that second baseman position. Uh, beginning of the year, he got hurt on June 27th. Got this young kid, Dilson Herrera, who's only 21 years old. Uh, he was batting 195 with two homers, four RBIs, a couple stolen bases. Um, but he only played 25 games, and he's also only 21. So in my opinion, maybe they maybe they should have kept him in AAA. Maybe he's ready um, I, you know, to, to make it in the MLB. We'll see. He hasn't played since the 27th, so we'll have to see if maybe next year he can do that. He's also only 21. So, get, you know, if he has to play another couple years in AAA, I think that's fine. I think he's I think he's going to be okay. I don't think you have to worry about him with only being 21 and those kind of stats. He's still young. Uh, they do have Daniel Murphy, though, who's played uh, 48 games at second base and 40 at third base. Uh, who's having a great, great year. 280 average, 9 homers, 45 RBIs. Good, solid veteran for this team. When you look at the third base position, they also have Eric Campbell, who's played 43 games over at third base, as well as Juan Uribe. Uh, Eric Campbell's only batting 179 with three homers, 19 RBIs, and five stolen bases. Again, solid guy to bring in maybe in the seventh or eighth inning as a pinch hitter for your pitcher. Uh, Juan Uribe's 249, 12 homers, 32 RBIs, a good veteran to have on this team. The shortstop position, Wilmer Flores, uh, an exciting young kid. I really, I really like him. He's also only 24 years old. Batting 253, 12 homers, 44 RBIs. He's played 78 games at shortstop. He's also played 30 at second base, so he can play multiple positions as well, which is good to have from a young player. Uh, Ruben Tejada is also a utility player. He's played a little bit everywhere. 48 games at short, 19 at third, 13 at second base. Uh, he's, a, he's only 25 years old. He's batting 258 with two homers and 21 RBIs. So they got a lot of young players here under the age of 25 that can play multiple positions, and I think that's why this team's going to be successful not just this year but going into the future. Their pitching staff, though, is the main thing that has kept this team leading this division and will win this division. The last player I'll mention, Kelly Johnson. He's played 37 games in the outfield, 44 games in the infield. Just a general good utility guy to have on an NL roster. He's got a 255 average with 11 homers and 39 RBIs. So they have those few players like Granderson, bringing in Cespedes, as well as Lucas Duda, who are going to get you 25-plus homers and bring power to your lineup. And then you have a great starting rotation, and I think that's that's what you need in the NL um, is to have a great rotation, some solid guys that are going to hit for power, some speed guys, um, and, and you know, Granderson brings both, as does Cespedes. So I think this is a very solid roster, good young roster with a bunch of players that can play multiple positions. Got high hopes for this Mets team. I think they'll make a deep playoff run. 
And those are my thoughts on the Mets. I will finish off New York week tomorrow with my look at the Yankees. Thank you again all for listening and watching. You can follow me on Twitter at gham614. And that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with the Yankees. Thanks again. Bye-bye.